So you want to write a research methodology for your dissertation or work research project? Not sure of the fastest way to do this? I'll show you how to do this in four simple steps. If you're new to this channel, I'm Dr. D, a global health practitioner and academic. Before we delve in, let's talk about the difference between research methodology and methods, as these terms are often confused. Methodology is the overall approach to research. It sets out the rationale of your research and the lens through which you will analyze your results. The methods, on the other hand, are the specific tools and techniques used to collect and analyze data within that approach. For example, semi-structured interviews and focus groups. The methods you choose are heavily influenced by your ontological and epistemological assumptions. If you want to learn more about how ontology and epistemology influence your methodology, I have another video on my channel that explains that more. Okay, with that clarified, let's dive into the steps. Step one, state your research question and describe the type of data you propose to collect and why. For example, will quantitative data be sufficient or do you need qualitative data as well? Maybe you need both. Additionally, consider whether you'll be using experimental data collected through the manipulation of certain variables or simply descriptive data based on observations. Will you utilize any secondary data? These details are important in helping the reader understand not only the purpose of your proposed research, but also the steps you plan to take in conducting it. You should also justify the choices made in terms of their alignment with the research objectives, questions and resources available, such as time, research team skills and funds. If you're getting value from this video, please hit the like button. Step 2. Describe your data collection methods. First, you want to specify the type of data you'll be collecting. This could be qualitative data, such as interviews or focus groups, or quantitative data, such as surveys or experiments. Next, describe the sampling plan for your study. This should include information on the sample size and demographics, as well as the criteria used to select participants. Then detail the specific methods you'll be using to collect the data. This could include the specific questions or prompts you'll use in your survey, the recruitment and selection process for participants, and any specialized equipment or materials needed. It is also important to explain how data will be collected and by whom. This can include details on the training and qualifications of the research staff, as well as the timeline and location for data collection. Having a clear and comprehensive overview of the data collection methods is essential for the credibility and rigour of the research study. It allows the reader to understand how the data for the study will be gathered and to evaluate the validity and reliability of the study. A clear and comprehensive overview also allows other researchers to replicate the study, which is an important aspect of the scientific process. In addition, it helps to ensure that the study is conducted in an ethical and responsible manner, with appropriate measures taken to protect the participants and to ensure the accuracy and integrity of the data. Here is an example of a study I recently carried out in Sierra Leone on religious leaders' perspectives on family planning. As this is a research proposal, this is all written in the future tense. When it's time to write up your dissertation or research report, simply convert to the past tense and ensure the methods reflect what actually happened. For example, you may have altered the sampling plan. Step three, describe how you plan to process and analyze the data. Qualitative data can include audio data, such as interview recordings, visual data, such as images or video, and historical data, such as newspapers. You should also explain the strategies you will use to interpret and analyze the data. This might include coding the data, identifying themes and patterns, and constructing narrative summaries. Be sure to provide enough detail so that another researcher can understand and replicate your analysis. If you want to learn more about how to analyze qualitative data, there is a video on my channel. For quantitative data, you'll need to explain how you prepared the data. For example, checking for missing data and outliers, and the statistical tests and procedures you will use to analyze the data. Be sure to provide enough detail so that another researcher can understand and replicate your analysis, including any software you will use and the specific parameters you will set. 
It is also a good idea to report any assumptions or limitations of your analysis, such as the sample size or the representativeness of the sample. Step 4. Discuss the validity and reliability of your proposed study. This is the final step in writing your research methodology. Validity refers to whether your study will be measuring what it is supposed to be measuring. Reliability refers to the consistency and repeatability of your results. You can address these issues by 1. Discussing any measures you will take to ensure the validity of your study. This can include, for example, using multiple data sources or triangulating your findings. 2. Consider the potential threats to the validity of your study, such as bias or confounding variables, and explain how you address or control for these threats. 3. Discuss the reliability of your study, including any measures you will take to ensure the consistency and repeatability of your results. 4. If you will be using a standardised measure or instrument, explain how you will establish its reliability and validity. By following these four steps, you can write a clear and effective research methodology that will help you ensure the validity and reliability of your proposed study. That's it. You can now develop your research methodology. Remember to like and subscribe.